Welcome to Dr. Kez's Chiro Lab. I'm Dr. Kez, Doctor of Chiropractic. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing so that you don't miss any of our content. Chiropractic adjustments without the crack? What? This video is going to take you through 10 alternatives to the traditional twist and crack chiropractic that have just as great results. Stay tuned. We're here with M, Gym Junkie, as you can see. We're going to go through some of these techniques on M so that you can see how they work. Don't be fooled into thinking that low force adjustments means minimal results, because it absolutely doesn't. These 10 techniques that we're going to take you through get profound results. We're going to start with seven adjustive procedures, and then we're going to follow it through with some soft tissue techniques, including cupping and dry needling towards the end of the video. Number one, respiratory assisted procedures. Some joints within the body move in a predictable pattern with respiration. As you can see, when you take a deep breath, the body moves the shoulders forward, and as you breathe out, they come back. Very common subluxation pattern in the shoulder is for that shoulder to move forward and become resistant and stuck there. As a chiropractor, it's our job to find the joint restrictions and to encourage their movement into the correct position. So an anterior shoulder, for example, we would get him to take a nice deep breath in and apply pressure into the direction of correction. We do this enough times for that joint to move itself back in. A lot of clients say they can actually feel that joint move back in, even though it's such a light procedure. Technique number two, onto your tummy please. This is Logan Basic. Logan Basic is used for a very specific type of subluxation. Here's a sacrum I prepared earlier. If you can imagine that this sacrum being the end of the spine and the beginning of the pelvis has tilted forwards and has stuck there, that makes our job a little more challenging. It's very difficult to get to the front of the sacrum to be able to pull it backwards. So we use a muscle, piece of paper here, but imagine this is a little piriformis. It attaches to the side of the sacrum and attaches to the side of the hip here. We use a very directed contact pressure, very light however, to stimulate that muscle, and in effect it tries to move away from our thumb. The muscle contracts to do that, which tightens it and pulls the sacrum back into the position that we require it in. Very gentle technique, feels like not much is happening, but I can't tell you the amount of times I've had a client struggle to get down onto their tummy on the table and get up with ease. It's a really, really powerful technique. Blocks is the next one we're going to talk about. Again, it's a very specific subluxation pattern that requires these types of treatment tools. When the pelvis is in an asymmetrical pattern, which means that one side is tight and the other side is loose, we use the blocks to counterbalance that pressure. When the pelvis is in that distorted pattern, it creates a leg length difference that we use as our assessment and to let us know when the technique is finished. So we might place the blocks low on the side of the short leg and high on the side of the long leg, allowing the muscles that are tight to have a chance to elongate and the muscles and ligaments that are already stretched, it gives them a chance to recoil. Great technique. Now, my all-time favourite is the activator. This little guy is one of my favourite tools and gets some really, really great results. It has the ability to change its tension so that we can use it on the small bones of the neck all the way down to the larger bones of the lower back and the hips and pelvis. When we use this technique, you'll hear that there is an audible click. There's always something out in M's back, just something like this. It's a very directional thrust that we use with the technique, with this tool, allowing the joint to then move in the direction that it's no longer moving in or has been restricted in to allow that movement to take place. This technique is fantastic because it doesn't require your body to be twisted and contorted into a position before the technique is taking place, which means your muscles are nice and relaxed and they accept the adjustment really, really well. I'm going to roll over onto your back now, please, Ed. The next technique that we're going to talk about is called Neuro Impulse Protocol, NIP for short. This technique is, again, used very specifically for joints that require us as a chiropractor to be able to feel the rhythm of what's happening. One of the most common places that we use this technique is on the xiphoid process. It's a tiny bone at the bottom of your breastbone, and when it's not functioning properly, it has the capacity to lock up your pelvis because the abdominal muscles attach to it 
as well as your pelvis. This procedure requires us to hold pressure on the area. Once we feel that the body has started to accept the position that we're putting the body into, we do a very quick release. This technique, as much as it looks like it's forceful, is extremely light. It's as much pressure as you could bear on your closed eyeball. It's a technique that we use on infants, including newborn babies. They don't even wake up when that procedure is done. Now, for my favourite technique to have done on me, and I think your favourite too, then. Yeah. Cranials. The bones of the cranial, the skull has 22 bones in it, eight of which are in the cranium, and these are the ones that we're talking about now. When they're functioning properly, they move synchronistically with each other to change the pressure inside the skull. The brain produces fresh cerebrospinal fluid, which nourishes and also protects the spine and the nervous system. When this system is functioning properly, it creates a pump that allows the old fluid to be drawn up the spinal cord and fresh fluid to be pushed back down again. When it's not functioning properly, it can lead to those feelings of lethargy and tiredness, your immune system can be awful, and your memory is horrific. Very, very light pressure, we find the areas that are not functioning properly, and we lift and hold those until they start to move and function underneath our hands. It is so relaxing. We often use this technique right at the very end of a treatment to consolidate all of the other nervous system changes that we've done within the body. And it is really relaxing, isn't it? A couple of times I'm pretty sure Em's fallen asleep, but not this time. Every now and again, there's areas on our body that require a little bit more force with their adjustments. There's no point getting you back into our office over and over again to use an activator if it's gonna take two or three goes when we can get it with one go with a drop piece table. This table that's lying underneath M is specifically designed with sections of the table that can lift up to allow us to use a faster adjustment in those particular areas. The table is lifted up. Let's make sure that this is our classic pattern here. Like this to hold your body weight and therefore it can cater to any body size. And then the table is adjusted with the thrust of the adjustment to then allow normal movement to be restored. The table is not the only way that we do these adjustments because sometimes we need to adjust smaller bones of the wrist, ankles and knees, and we have a miniature drop piece table that we use to accommodate for these adjustments. It means that your body yet again can remain in a nice neutral position and be able to be adjusted with a lot of ease. Thanks. Now we're going to move into some of the soft tissue techniques. Why do we do soft tissue with a chiropractic adjustment? Keep in mind that the spine and all of your joints are surrounded by a whole lot of muscles. If your muscles, for example, in the neck are really tight on the right hand side and loose on the left, we do a correction to that area. Over time, it's just gonna pull that joint back out again. So we find it extremely important to make sure that we balance those muscles to prevent those uneven pulls on your vertebra. The other thing that's really important is our muscles can hold on to lactic acid, which is a waste product. We don't want that in our system. Again, it pulls in directions that we just don't want. So we use soft tissue to try and eliminate that lactic acid and bring balance back to the body because we find it allows the adjustments to hold a whole lot easier. In some circumstances, injuries for example, like a swollen ankle sprained, we use a technique which is called the ultrasound. Ultrasound is a wonderful tool that puts high sound frequency into the area that's damaged. You do need to have the area exposed, however, so an ankle not so much of a difficulty, but if it's a shoulder, you would need to expose that area so that we can put some conducting gel on so those sound waves can get through the skin and get to where they need to get to. The idea of those sound waves is to increase the blood flow to the area, which brings with it a whole lot of healing cells to be able to initiate that process of healing to those tissues that have been damaged. We also use a cream called Trauma Relief Cream on the area before we do the ultrasound because it allows that sound wave to drive that, that trauma relief cream, allow it to penetrate a whole lot deeper to get to where it needs to get to. That cream is absolutely fantastic. It's completely natural. We've got a link below for you to find out more about it. It works really well with the ultrasound. It works really well without it. Moving right along to cupping. Cupping is a technique that we use particularly along the spine, to be able to draw the skin and the superficial layer of muscle up and into the cup 
to break up adhesions and increase the blood flow to the area. Again, we've spoken about how the muscles can really affect a pull on the spine. If we can release the tension in those muscles, the adjustments will hold a whole lot better. And I can tell you from my own experience, when you've had a treatment with cupping, you get off the table and it just feels so loose. It's like you've been in a two hour massage, it's fantastic. Dry needling is the next one. Before you turn off the camera, don't panic. I just want to tell you a bit about what it's like. The needles are very, very fine. In fact, multiple of these needles could fit inside the normal gauge of a blood drawing syringe, for example. They are so fine, a lot of clients say they don't even feel them going in. The technique is different to traditional Chinese medicine acupuncture. We've got a link below on something that tells you all about the differences of those, because I get asked that question all the time. But what you need to know about these is that those needles have the ability to get into the trigger points that we spoke about before where the lactic acid is stored and allows the release of those lactic acid trigger points. It's really important to understand that if we were to try and get in deep enough to affect those lactic acid trigger points, we would create a bit of peripheral damage in the first place. And I don't know about you, but it's quite painful sometimes when you've got trigger points. The needle, even though it's invasive and it does pierce the skin, does it in a much more comfortable way. It releases that lactic acid, you then drink water, flush the lactic acid out of your body, your muscles are super loose and allow those adjustments to hold. Hearing about the techniques like this is one way, but if you've got any conditions that you would be interested to find out how we treat, please feel free to pop them in the comments below. We'd love to be able to help you out on your therapeutic journey. If you've enjoyed this video, please click on the like button to let us know. Thanks for having us on your therapeutic journey.